The Butterfly and the Jaguar Cub by the Night Ninja, Chapter 19, Final Transformation. This is the last chapter. There was a bright flash early one morning as the doors shifted. Mirabelle gave a startled shout as she opened the double doors of her castle and found herself back in Casita instead of Antonio's room. She looked at the door behind her. It was glowing like the others from Casita's side, but once inside it turned into a massive double doors. The candle had moved her castle to her own room in the middle of the night. Dolores, Peppa, Julieta and the same door frame of Abuela's room had all shifted onto one side and her own door was where Abuela's used to be. Antonio, Luisa and Bruno's rooms were on the side opposite the others and the nursery had moved between Antonio's and her own room. She looked up to see the candle in the second story window above her door and bolted up the grand staircase to see the new balcony section in each side, right before the doors as to the hallways. The balconies led to the window where the candle resided, flickering at her in a kind of wave. She then ran back outside to look at her new door. Antonio's had changed to be just him and the animals, and her door now had her surrounded by animals, a crown on her head, butterflies everywhere, and she was holding the candle. It was like her castle had been transplanted right in the middle of the night. Everyone started coming out of their rooms to see why Mirabelle had shouted. There were also other changes to the other doors, particularly the married couples. Ulietta's was now Ulietta and Augustine, with a picture of both of them, as well as a snake and a bee. Peppa's now had a felix on it, and a caiman and a tarantula. Bruno's had the rats, Dolores's now had Mariana on it as well as a turtle. Isabella's stood in front of a Venus flytrap and sundews. Luisa had a hippo pod behind her. Dolores did not seem happy about being woken up so early on the day after her wedding, but was shocked at the changes to Casita. Ay, it seems Casita likes to tease me as well, said Augustine as he looked at the bee on his door, before he noticed the cock of the rock on his shoulder in the portrait. The candle flickered joyously, and the butterfly said that the candle was laughing hysterically at Augustine. Blame the candle, Papi, not Casita, laughed Mirabel. Oh dear, it seems like the candle has your abuelo's sense of humour, said Abuela, coming out of the nursery, after hearing the commotion outside, and catching the last of the conversation before the door, seeing the door in question. She then saw the frame of the door that must have been hers where only war should have been. It meant she was slowly getting it back. She was making progress. Does this mean I don't get to share with Mama anymore? Asked Antonio. Fred not, little prince. Your door will always be open to your mother. But the candle has decided it's time for her space to be her own. It also needs her to be more accessible to itself and to others. The keeper of the candle and the leader of the Encanto can't be unreachable, said Parse. Will my room change as well? asked Antonio. As you get older, small changes will occur to give you more privacy and to show your status as prince. Lord Bruno has already changed from what it was before to be more fitting for his position and needs. Lady Luisa's will probably change more throughout the day, since the changes can't take place in occupied space, unless they are small and won't affect the occupier. She will need a total overhaul of her room, said Parse. Luisa! You should stay out of your room today, because Eden needs to make some big changes to it, Antonio said to the girl on his right. Okay, I'll just have the day off. We all do, so I was planning on just curling up with a book, but since I need to be out of my room... Mira, can I use your library? asked Louisa. Sure, I got hounded with dress and suit commission requests last night by the townspeople, so I planned on sewing all day, said Mirabelle. Did you just get up? asked Dolores. No, I've been up for a few hours. Had to give morning court. But this is the first time I've been outside of my castle today, said Mirabelle. Fire Bell, the eternal flame is pleased with how much you have grown, and that is why it decided to make you its keeper now. Alama is done, said a butterfly. She looked up to where it was happily flickering in her window. It seemed brighter, taller even, as though it were a brand new candle that had just been lit. Mariano then came out to see what all the no commotion was about. Is it just me, or are we on a different side of the house than we were last night? asked Mariano, rubbing his eyes. 
Yes, the candle moved everyone and made Mirabelle the head of the family and Encanto, said Dolores, leaning up against the doorframe as our mother stared at her with a knowing smile, making the newlyweds blush like crazy. Louisa saw the smirk on Peppa's face before looking at Dolores. Mirabelle has some books in her library, grinned Louisa. Dolores gave Mirabelle a look like a puppy begging for snacks. Louisa can show you where the library is, said Mirabelle. The three married Madrigal women dragged their husbands and Louisa into Mirabelle's castle room. I'm going to explore and see what changes were made to my room, said Antonio, darting back in. It hadn't taken long for Casita to make the changes to his room, and had been able to change it in the ten minutes he was outside. His hammock and dresser had been moved to a brand new luxury treehouse that even had a bathroom and heated pool and waterfall for bathing. Line break. Louisa led the small group to the library and showed them the, um, naughty section. Papa took a look at some of the titles, chose an interesting one, and dragged Felix to one of the large plush couches by the fireplace to read. Orlietta found a tamer book involving food-based romantic gestures, and both she and Augustine went to one of the balconies overlooking the courtyard. Dolores had several armfuls of books by the time Mariana went to pick the one, and they both went to read it in one of the window nooks in the corner. Louisa climbed the ladder, glad it was made of stone, to the top where she knew the best books were, as well as the most private of reading nooks. A little alcove set in the wall was filled with cushions and a lantern suspended from the ceiling. The hidden staircase opened to reveal Francesca, who lay down next to Louisa. I hope my new room has a library of its own with a space like this, said Louisa. It will. You are a lady of the court, and your new room will reflect that. It will be almost as luxurious as this castle, said Francesca, even if Louisa couldn't understand her. The hippo's favourite person in the world gave her a scratch on the ears. Line break. Ulietta never had engrossed herself in a book like this. Her daughter's love of reading had come from Augustine. But the words in the book played like moving pictures in her mind, out of the corner of her eye. As she read, she could see her husband taking notes on certain things in the book. Peppa's giggling from inside the library proper was trickling out to their private balcony. Mia Moore, look. Julieta was just looking up at the white sandstone and marble wall and saw vines climbing up and up, thick and full of the largest grapes she had ever seen. Augustine plucked a bunch and smiled at her. She set the book down and lay on across the upholstered bench, allowing her husband to feed her grapes. They were full and sweet, and though firm in the skin, split easily enough beneath her teeth. They were the colour of amethysts on the outside, but when peeled were like peridots. Marietta opened her mouth for another, but Augustine surprised her by kissing her. Would you like me to close the balcony door, mi amor? He grinned. Quickly, giggled Julieta. Line break. Mirabel sat at her sewing machine. Abuela telling her about the time Pedro tried to make breakfast to surprise her on her birthday and nearly burnt down the kitchen. Mira, would you like to know a secret? Asked Abuela, her eyes sparkling with mirth. Sure, said Mirabel. Promise not to tell Papa? Asked Abuela. I promise, said Mirabel. In my room, I had a whole shelf of dirty novels. Your abuela and I would take turns reading them to each other, giggled Abuela. When was the last time you read them? asked Mirabel. Oh, it has been years. But I think when I get my room back, I'll dust off one of my favourites. Some of them would even make Felix blush, <laughs> giggled Abuela. Oh, you could surprise all of them right now and pick one off my shelves, laughed Mirabel. Oh, that is a wonderful idea. Line break. The library door opened and Alma walked in, followed by Mirabel. With a smirk on her face, Mirabel showed her grandmother to the dirty romance section. Oh, they made a sequel of this! Oh, how wonderful! exclaimed Abuela, pulling the book and walking off to the one of the couches, where Peppa and Felix stopped their reading to stare at her. Peppa caught a glimpse of the title of the book in her mother's hand. Mama! exclaimed Peppa. Peppa, Nihia, where do you think you got your dirty mind from? asked Alama. Peppa looked both impressed and horrified at the idea of her buttoned-up, prim and proper mother enjoying such stories. Outside, in Casita, the last change took effect. 
a golden door filling in its frame. An image appeared of a younger armour with a silhouette of Pedro behind her. Line break. That night, happy shrieks came from each room as the occupants each discovered something new. Louisa had her own library and music room, each with her favourite aspects of Mirabelle's. She also had a sitting room and kitchens and an indoor pool. Casita had given her a mansion. Isabella's room looked like a wild, unkempt rainforest, with furniture carved into the walls, and her bed was a hammock made from a giant leaf. Oversized sundew Audrey next to the hammock. Alamo was surprised to see she had her room back, and even more surprised at the outline of Pedro behind her, bringing tears to her eyes as she caressed the image. Soon everyone went to bed after such a long day. Blind break. The golden butterfly landed on the banister and smiled at Mirabelle's door. A young jaguar came up behind him. She has done well. Are you happy with her? Asked the cub. My granddaughter could never fail to make me proud, said the golden butterfly before flying off into the night. End of chapter and end of story. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this because that is gorgeous. That last little bit, Pedro being the butterflies. Just, just, 50 times yes. Yes, 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 yes. He is basically the candle. It's like a confirmation of that theory going around that his spirit is the miracle and that's what gives his family their magic. Oh my God, that's amazing. Also those funny bits with the dirty humour and Alma liking those books that Peppa likes is flipping hilarious. <laughs> anyway, um, I also like all the changes. I like the idea that Mirabelle does get her own room. I've said this in my other Encanto works as well. But in this particular one, I like that Mirabelle needs to be accessible to the people and that Antonio has his own room to grow. As much as they are mother and son in this particular fan fiction, it is nice that they have their own separate identities as well. And I like that bit with Louisa, that she is finally her own person and Isabella's room being a rainforest. Yes, I like the idea of the balconies as well. I'm sorry if I stumbled in describing that, but seeing it on the page when I haven't read it before, because this is my first time reading it, uh yeah i just like that i like that idea a lot anyway remember to like comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever i upload a new video have a good day night or whatever time zone you're in bye my guys guys are non-binary pals make sure to check out my other videos as well there are plenty of others on my channel i'm planning on doing a bridgerton one soon so buckle up bye